Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Panchas and welcome back to RL Mages tutorial slash playthrough. It is video number 4 right now, which means we are officially out of Euler game. That's mostly because it's 1049 instead of video number 4, but whatever, let's just gloss over that. Now, I firstly need to correct one mistake I made, uh, I believe, last video. Maybe it was video up before that, but I think it was last video in fact. Do you remember how I was crying over the fact that I placed Pillars of Science, Knowledge, I'm sorry, those ones over here, where I was about to level them, them up? Well, I wasn't, it was one of my brain dead moments where I just completely failed to rationally think, because that's not how it actually does work. When we go into here, it, it's a... It explains it right here. I don't know why I was suddenly had this moment of stupidity, but I did. It says plus one level for all spells on Empire. Spells, not pillars. This improves the level of your battle spells. And only those. So, for example, this increases the amount of defense or offense given to your given by your primary two spells that you always have. Or this adds the extra debuff, debuff effect on the... Uh, I believe it's called... Incantation of Enervation, which is the stunning spell. So that's what this uh, ability does, or other technology, and nothing else. If, however, you want to improve your pillars, you can indeed do that, but you need this research, dust mechanics. And this will improve the power of the pillars in your empire. Why did I confuse the two? Is absolutely beyond me. I don't know what happened. It is just, I'm ashamed. I honestly am. And yeah, I'm sorry for making you possibly play, play wrong, because that was inexcusable, I would say. Yeah, sorry. I think it happens, although it shouldn't have, so my mistake right there. Either way, because of this, I can just fully spam those pillars, I guess. But, something we also discussed last time, I do not want to place a pillar right here. Reason being is because I want to place a borough street on this town. Now, why would I want to do that? It's actually very, very simple. It's because right now, if I finish this borough street, I'll still have not a single level 2 borough street anywhere. In order to level them up all the way up to level 2, I need to have one borough street surrounded by four borough streets. And I can do this with this one after I create another borough street over here, which I will at some point anyway. And the reason why I want to do this as soon as possible is, again, very simple. It's because on level 2, this district will give me plus 15 happiness, and thus combat the amount of unhappiness given to me by creating yet another district right here. And I do not want to go too high on the old unhappiness rating, because it's not good even with a positive anomaly like, for example, Wizard Stone. I almost said Wizard Stone, I don't know why, but I almost did. So yeah, that's the reason why I don't want to place anything here, because I'll try to get a new bar street in here as soon as possible. However, as you can see, I will have some difficulties doing that, because I only have 6 population, so getting the ability to place then another bar street will take me some time. Will it take 10 turns though? I think it might not, I think I might be able to gain enough population for another bar street before 10 turns. As such, I'm not willing to risk it, I'm just gonna place another arcane of knowledge, let's say right here. Actually not, because I am not do not have a district right there yet, yet ready, so I'll just place it over here. And those effects do stack, as you can see, so it's still fine, I will get, just get more sense on those particular tiles. It's all good in the neighborhood. It did cost me some deaths, but it's not like I desperately need this death for something else. It is helpful, but pillars are the reason why you have dust. Alright, have I tried talking to those guys yet? I don't remember, oh wait, I have no more movement. Right, okay. I honestly do not remember if I tried talking to those guys, so I guess I'll try talking to them again. Maybe the quests will tell me if I did. I do have... Ouch. This is problematic. Now, the thing is, Harmonites, while they are pretty tanky and they deal a lot of damage, and in general I really like those units, in battle they only have one speed, which means that they are extraordinarily easy to kite, especially with ranged unit. Against one Harmonite, I would be able to just go on a merry-go-round all day long and annihilate him with pretty much any ranged unit in the game. However, there are two of them and they could potentially, depending on terrain, be able to close in on me and actually kill me. Because once they hit, they hit hard. So, we'll see how it goes. I'll definitely mine with this one. But let's have a quick look. Quest is currently progress. Yeah, minor faction, minor faction, minor faction. You have... No, that's the main faction. Those are the three minor faction quests. So, well, actually, I just noticed 
Ah, oh, that's cute. <laughs> Do you see the difference in ad hoc? Yeah. Alright, anyway, yeah, there are obviously three minor faction quests. And which minor faction got me this one? Actually, it doesn't matter. I just have to capture something and I'll get something amazing for it. Either way, what I want to do is... Uh, what I will have to do is check if this uh, minor faction village gave me a quest already or not. It's only one ten. I mean, one point of movement wasted on walking to there, so it's fine. Anyway, first things first, let's actually fight a battle on the fully hot- No, 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 not auto, mind you. I almost could on, click on, collect on auto. This would have been bad. Now, there aren't too many cliffs, unfortunately, which is slightly worrying. Cliffs are your best friend when you're trying to kite the Harmonites, because, you know, they help you out a lot in this regard. I will not be able to do that, unfortunately. All right, let's just position over here. And I have the better initiative, however, despite this fact, I do want to... Hold on a second, one, two, yeah, I can actually stand where I stand right now and it will be fine. Those guys will not be able to get close to me. So I'll just stand where I am and attack the enemy. Hey, I should have range. One, two, three, four. All right, I didn't have range with my here. Oh, okay, that's fine. Anyway, now I have range, but unfortunately my area of effect damage well, is, is going to deal extra damage. It is not going to attack both harmonites, but nah, uh, no problem. I overestimated the power of those harmonites, it looks like. I'll move my hero backwards one tile just in case he actually somehow survives, but there's no risk in him anymore. I did have higher ground, I have to admit, and I do have a hero over here, which does help a significant amount. My hero did decide not to attack this stand, but still, she is entirely safe, and the harmonite is dead. I did overestimate his power. Poor guys, poor guys. This is what having only one movement speed gets you. The other guys really need more if it's all at least to have better initiative, although even better initiative wouldn't help them too much. What they need even more so actually is sharp sense, which is an ability that lowers damage they take from ranged units. Oh yeah, this would help harmonites a lot. So if you have harmonites and you can give them the accessory, there is an accessory in tier 1 and tier 2 that gives no only tier 1, sorry. But there is an accessory that gives you sharp sense to your units that have this accessory equipped. So when you have harmonites, 9 times out of 10 I would say that you should equip harmonites with sharp sense just so they can take less damage from ranged attacks. It's probably usually a pretty good idea. You do need to have glassy for that if I remember. Alright, okay, I already got a quest from those guys. Alright, good to know, just wanted to check it out. If that's indeed the case, let's go ahead and continue exploring into the enemy region and see over there. Level up. Oh, that's that beautiful because I was going to do this quest anyway. So, Power of Prestige is a really nice quest because it has no timer of any description. You just have to level up something to level 2, which you will do very, very quickly. And uh, since there's no timer, there's no rush. You have, It's just basically bonus fat influence at some point it is up to you when you're gonna get it but you are gonna get it so it's a really nice quest it's almost like finding influence in a ruin but delayed per se if you know what i'm trying to say all right then let's have a quick look how's the city doing it's okay it's making dust dredger extra population 110 which it will gain one population regardless which is also nice do you want to have more science potentially yeah Power Factory is going to take three turns regardless, so let's, yeah, let's put one population of science, since I do want to have a better science. I could also start working on influence, which is actually tempting, because as you can see, if I want to continue with extra happiness in science, I will need 80 influence, which will be a bit difficult to get. Now, what I'm hoping is that I will not need this extra happiness by the time there is a new Empire plan, because of the power streets I'll have in Ulara, but it might not be the case, so just... If that happens, it's good to have some extra influence. Besides, you never know, I may want to actually assimilate some minor faction at some point. In fact, I would love to assimilate Erekis, but right now I'm yet to fulfill the quest. Alright, you know, so, population grown to three, that's very, very nice. Indeed, I'm going to put this guy on food. Yeah, I'll put one of those guys on food, the one that will stay over on influence. So. 9 tens of influence that this walker gives you extra 2, so that's extra 18 influence, which is not enough, unfortunately. Yeah, that's actually very sad. Uh, could I possibly get enough influence? Yes, I could. Is it actually worth it, though? That is the more important question, I feel. You know, in all honesty, I possibly know. Possibly know, because I'll do my best to develop the city as quickly as possible. It's very important in my eyes. So I'll just not sacrifice the city's development for extra influence. 
And in my main city, I do want to create an army to attack the Vortex, which is more important for me right now than actually extra happiness. And I will gain extra happiness in this city after I create more Boros streets. As for this city right now, I do not have any Boros streets, so it's just peachy. Especially since it, ha it does have wizards still. And if things go dire, I can activate any booster and it will give me extra happiness. So, it's all good, I didn't have to worry too much about the influence. I'll continue working it with one worker though, just because I may need it in the future to assimilate a faction, or maybe to go for some poorer but still decent empire plan. It's never a bad thing to have extra influence back in your account. Now, I also keep... Oh, yeah, I just realized, but I will gain extra 30 influence from that. Okay, okay. So basically I could say that I have 9, 59 influence right now and this is more manageable because I only need to have what 80? Oh yeah, hmm. That is interesting. So I only need to have 80 and I'm getting 5 per 10 so in 9 tenths easily. No problem, I'll get it. Alright then, if that's the case, <laughs> that's even better. So let's actually go ahead and continue exploring. I want to see where the enemy city is and I also want to see if there are any ruins I could plunder. They probably are, the question is if they are going to have anything decent in them. Also, I do want to have even more minor faction quests, even though I'm still far away from completing some of those. So let's have a quick look at those again. Silix Village, destroy it, alright. This one is... F oh, return to the Silix Village. Oops, didn't do that. I should do it. I should return them there. I should be like, yo, I help you out, now be my friends. And then I should ban them, if I can. Oh no, actually, why ban them when I can just... I mean. Well, I'll fulfill this quest. What I can ban them instead and finish this quest? That's a better idea. They may have quite a few defenders though. I only need a bunch of zealots to actually do that. And I only have one in my city right now. I could buy out some of those guys though. I could, couldn't I? Oh yeah, I could. I could also buy out Enqua Wing. Enqua Wing plus two zealots would be enough, I would say, to actually go ahead and kill those Silex. So let's buy out one zealot already. So I have two of them. This will be enough to kill as many Harmonites as possible, I believe. But just in case, I will also assist those zealots with an Enqua Wing in case they have to fight something else. Now, Plow Factory is finished, and I wish I realized that I was making this because then I would rush that instead of a zealot, but that's fine. Um, I will finish Enqua Wing first. I do need to start conquering people. And to be more precise, I do need to start conquering voters, so I will do that. Do I dare move out with just two zealots? No, I do not. That is the answer. So, I did gain more population. I will do this like this. Two turns to gain Echo Wing. That's nice. Let's move population until it gets to three. That's free. So, let's move it back. And so I can get Echo Wing in two turns. Very nice, very nice. So far, so good. That's for my second city. What is it doing? That's what I think it was doing before. It does it plow factories, however. So I'll just do it like so and leave the population working as it currently is. I'm lacking what it is doing. It's both efficient in terms of food and industry, and it is it's nice. Also, my region is really, really ginormous. Wow. Those are some big regions. Alright, so let's continue walking along. And the broker lords. Now, they could be problematic. However, the funny thing is, broker lords have been nerfed. Uh, not directly, mind you. They haven't been nerfed in any specific way, although, no, they have, they, those bishops are now much weaker in melee combat, they have been just super powerful even in melee combat, now they are way weaker in that respect. However, ignoring that, they have also been nerfed indirectly by having many other factions buffed, for example, the voters that we are fighting right now, uh, they used to have this mechanic that they had to choose one holy resource and then stick to it. You don't remember that my whole previous playthrough was about that. Well, that's kinda outdated. Now, their holy resource is whatever they activate. So if you remember, uh, voters can activate strategic resources, like they can, act like I can activate luxuries, right? They can do the same with strategic resources. And now the way it works in this patch is that the voters can uh, activate any resource and for the duration of the boost, it will be considered a holy resource for them. Which is very interesting. However, this is also interesting in another way because it kind of hinders them when they want to create uh, special structures that require holy resources because then they have to not only use the holy resources on creating a structure, they also have to firstly activate a uh, booster in order, to be in order to be able to actually use said uh, resource to create a structure. So they have to spend more, technically speaking. But it is still a buff because they are not limited to just one strategic resource. Also, I think this was something done with the quest line, making it a bit easier. I don't remember the details, though. Alright, then. 
Let's finish my tent, there isn't anything else for me to do right now. I believe, I could be wrong, I believe I can fly. I cannot sing, unfortunately. I believe I can sing, except I do not. Alrighty then, let's just continue moving along. There is a ruin right there, and there's a ruin right there. Of course, on two opposite sides, so I have to backtrack a bit. But that's fine, it's not a very big deal. And Quang is r not ready? What? Oh yeah, it's last treasure that is ready. And Quang will take one more turn, that's fine. So if I move everybody to food population production, this will be too much. So let's make sure that I can get Anchoring in 110 without spending dust. And it, it will indeed will require 5 workers. That is okay. With uh, this kind of army, Anchoring plus 2 Zarats, I should be able to stop over anything that comes my way. Even without a hero. So right now I have two potent army. One army, oh yeah, only has a Zelt and a hero. But those two have a very powerful combo. You've seen the amount of damage that those two can deal. It's significant. Now what I'm tempted to do is just to drop down the player of speed right here because then it would it would work really nice because it would walk walk over here, then walk back over here. But it is a waste of 120 dust, and I'm not in a hurry, so let's not do that. Either way, let's go ahead and check out those rings. Extra 50 dust. That's really nice. Let's continue walking along over in this direction. Nothing else to do. But there's one thing in fact. How about we name we name uh, there. let's try and say this again without failing. How about we name we <sighs> Alright. Third tries the charm. How about we How about we rename our cities? Alright, that was good enough. Yeah. English. Sometimes it's so difficult. So let's do just that so I can e more easily recognize those things. And you know what? I'm gonna call it Jensen. Because it's a really nice name that I like to give to pretty much anything in any of game. Because Jason is amazing. Now this city is going to be called... Insam. Which is Jason in Korean. <laughs> How about I name all my cities Jinsen in all the different languages. I'll actually have to learn a couple of new languages to do that. But yeah, I can call that in Polish as well. In German... Do I, rem I don't remember Jason in German, I'll have to look it up, but I do have a dictionary, I have a ton of German dictionaries actually, so that's not a big problem. And then I'll have to Google it with the Google Translator, but I'll do it, why not? Of course, mind you that in some, yeah, you would need to use Korean alphabet to write it correctly, but that's pretty much how you call it. I mean, yeah, pretty much. Alrighty then, uh, dear, dear, here, let's go ahead and explore those ruins, see what is inside of them. 70 dust, that's very nice, let's go ahead and go south or north. Now looking at this map, it looks like there is the north pole right there, so south theoretically should have more land. So let's actually continue walking south, and I like staying on top of a cliff because I have more vision as such. But of course, if I were to go downwards, then I would have discarded this ruin. Just my luck, just my luck. It's not a big deal though. Alright then. This army is now way more than strong enough and I can actually send it to burn down the Sex village and I'll feel proud doing it. I shouldn't, but I will because I'm a very mean bastard. <sighs> I still have my allergies by the way. I cannot possibly get rid of that. Alright, I want to have Plow Factory as soon as possible and apparently I'll have to wait four turns regardless. Yep. Now the reason why I want it is, everybody knows it, it gives you more food from your uh, workers on food production that you left on food production, which is by all means a rather splendid idea indeed. Now, oh, I just realized, you know what I was supposed to be working on? I was supposed to be working on this district because if I were to finish it in time, then guess what? I would be able to fulfill the quest that told me to level up my district, and as such, I would be able to go for a better empire plan. So let's get this district up and running as soon as possible, and I will need all my population. On production in order to do just that. Alrighty then, maybe I'll be able to do it, although I may have bowled this up by now. We will, we will see, I guess. Alright, let's walk over here. They'll be like, oh yeah, thank you for doing a quest. We are your friends now. And then I'll just draw my sword and pierce it. Pierce their chests with it. And this will be lovely. I'm such a mean, mean traitor. I guess every traitor is a by its very definition mean, but still, I'm I'm quite a meanie in that regard. Still no winter, makes me rather glad, because otherwise walking would take for absolutely effing ever, and I don't want to walk forever. So let's go ahead and see what is inside of those ruins. Abs obviously nothing, so I was just walking through a jungle, uh, or rather wetland, whatever, for no reason at all, but this is a very nice looking land. 
taken by my enemies, mind you, but it is still a nice looking land. So let's go ahead and finish the stand. Now I have three more tens only to finish the bar streets. With dust, I could potentially. Oh no, two more tens. In fact, yeah, two more tens, exactly. But what I can do is place Pill of No of Influence, which will not pay well enough, in fact. It is an alternative way of gaining enough influence. Uh, to, I mean, this 18 points. So let's have a quick think. I could put this population on dust. And then maybe I'll have enough dust to buy out this Borough Street in two turns. In two turns, it will be much cheaper. Right now, it is however 700 something. So it would have to be a lot cheaper, and I will need to have a lot more dust. As in a lot. And even if I put all the population in this city on dust, this will be like. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, 55 dust per 10. That will not be enough. I'm pretty certain it will not be enough. But if I put everybody on influence for a while, which I can do, I will easily gain enough. So let's just do that. Not spend dust. Even though this pillar, yeah, it's a nice looking pillar. It's a pillary kind of thing. You can see the shape. But I will not place it down. In my belief, pillar of influence is one of the less useful ones. Because you rarely need this extra influence. And it doesn't give you a lot of it either. When you level it up, sure, it does give you more. But you will need the pillar of knowledge way more than influence. Most of the times, Maybe in the future, as multiplayer develops, it will be different, but right now, it is not. Well, just multiplayer, but the diplomacy system in general. Speaking of multiplayer, I don't know about you, but I'm having a blast in multiplayer. It is really just so good. Surprisingly stable. I have heard that a lot of people are having problems with it, and I have had some problems, but considering the fact I already played for about 14 hours of multiplayer so far, I had barely any, honestly. The only problem that seems to be persistent is that when you try to parley with minor factions, I can never actually do this. They are like, oh yeah, we don't want to talk to you right now, come back later. It's something that pops out a lot for some reason in the multiplayer. And it doesn't in single player. I don't know what's up with that. Also, sometimes I'm getting weird errors with uh, lobbies that get messed up once you load a saved multiplayer game. However, they can be easily fixed by just quitting the lobby and hosting a new one one or two times and it will work eventually. It's not a big deal. So yeah, multiplayer surprisingly stable. As for those guys die. Wait, I didn't look at the amount of five. And there is three nearby. I should have looked at this perhaps. It feels like it would be a good idea if actually I looked at the amount of units I'm about to fight at any given second now. It would have helped, I have a feeling. Because surely I can easily snap one, two, or even three harmonites, but there's a lot of harmonites. Alright, hot position, ready to fight. All I have to are two zealots, honestly. Because Enqua Wings were amazing. They are being shut down by harmonites, unfortunately. They are being counted by them. Let's be on entirely honest about that. They are. So, right now we start with five of them on the battlefield. That is a lot. Some of them actually have more health for some reason. Right, I'll obviously try to move backwards as much as possible. Uh, so, I'll have those two guys on those two tiles and echoing on this tile then. Yeah, yeah, it will be fine. Except it won't. Alright, let's... I'm satisfied with this setup. Now, you do say you walk over here. You do say you walk... Actually, you walk here. You walk here. Actually, though, no, the Harmonites, this one can make it to where I am, so this guy has to walk backwards. But this guy does not. She can stay here for now, and it will be fine. Also, the Anchor Wing obviously going to move over there. And let's see what happens. Alright, Anchor Wing is going to uh, obviously move where she is supposed to, or it, or he. I have no idea what gender of this thing is, but it is of some specific gender, I guess. First AoE of the 10 of the battle has gone through. Very nice. I will need as much of this AoE as possible because Enko Wings, they are really powerful. They are very fast. They have really nice stats. I really like the stats because they are very well balanced all in general. They are just have, are so very nice. They are very good precision strikers. And against non-tanks, Enko Wings are probably one of the best units you can use because they are absolutely amazing at surgical strikes. They will just fly in kill something and they will kill it, trust me, and fly out. They are better at the cavalry in this respect, just so much better. They are really, really awesome. And they also look effing amazing. <laughs> Sadly, that ain't gonna be good enough against Harmonites right now. Because, yeah, as you can see, all I have is Night Slayer. And that's my only ability. And Night Slayer, not exactly useful because it gives me extra damage when fighting against, you know, uh, how are they called? How are they called? Cavalry. 
I do not see any cavalry over here. No, indeed I do not. Alright, so right now I have two choices. I can walk downwards with Enko Wing. This will probably kill this Harmonite, even though it is in a forest. But I will probably be able to kill this Harmonite. I'm pretty certain that I will. However, I will lose some of the morale bonus on this girl. And she will only have two morale bonus instead. I want morale bonus instead of two, so she will deal less damage. But I think that killing this Harmonite is very important. So do that. You walk backwards. And I am... I am aware that by moving my ankle wing forward, I will be sus uh, susceptible to damage from some of those Harmonites, but not too many of them, and the ankle wing can take a bit of damage quite well. So let's test to walk forwards. Kill this guy, hopefully I'll be able to kill him in one shot. I think I will. 25! Ah, it's so close and it's so far away. Oh well. It was worth a shot. No, I'm gonna apologize for what I'm doing right now. It's blowing my nose, but... I got no choice on the matter, I would say, because, you know, allergies. Not fun. Not at all. But what I can do is actually drink a bit of juice and drink, which is really good for the throat. And allergies as well. So, just give me a second. Mm. <coughs> Each time I drink it, I feel like... I'm drinking some kind of magical potion that is turning me into a monster or a werewolf. Oh! Oh, I love it. It's addicting. I can say that for a fact. Alright, Enko Wing going to take a bit extra damage. Thankfully, as I said, she can think. I keep calling her she. I think since I'm doing that, it must be a she. I mean, right now it is almost official lore because I'm making it so. Now, unfortunately, they, uh, the Harmonites are advancing and they are going to swarm my Enko Wing, which is rather unfortunate because I would rather they didn't. But. Uh, even more regrettably, I can't actually move my Aqua Wing backwards, and the simple reason for that is I need her to stay here and tank the damage and block the enemy from moving forward. However, then again, if I target those guys like so, focus fire on this guy, deal area of effect damage to everybody around, and move Aqua Wing backwards, I could keep her for a bit longer. Especially since if I will walk backwards, I'll give more morale bonus to my zealots. So I hope they will not move, they shouldn't, they are in range of this guy. So let's see what happens. I move backwards, and if they kill all those three Harmonites, it will be good. If not, this will be bad, because keep in mind, when I attack somebody, I uh, use this uh, somebody's retaliation ability, and then they cannot use their usual ability. But no, it didn't kill all of them, and as such, the enemy was able to get a beam strike off. Killed my Anchor Wake and damaged my Zealots, and now those guys are walking forward. This is the match of the Ants. I'm just the poor Saruman trying to defend, but what can I really do, even if I have amazing troops? Not much is the answer, not much. Thankfully, I can kill this Harmonite as well, and hopefully those girls will attack this one. Yes, they will. They will not kill it, though. Now they will not, and I might lose my ankle and my zealots. Now I will not. Thankfully, that guy was stupid enough and attacked the full health one guy. So that's good, that's good, that is something. I might be able to survive this battle. I'm basically trying to draw it out as much as possible because then I will be able to run. Yes! Alright, I didn't lose the battle. I killed a ton of Harmonites and didn't lose a battle. I did lose an Echo Wing, but I think I've seen the usefulness of it. It was able by itself to take a lot of those Harmonites and deal some damage to them as well. And Harmonites are the counter to Echo Wing. I'm just putting this out there. They are the ideal counter because Echo Wings are not supposed to fight tanks. And Harmonites are definitely just that. Tanks that can also deal a lot of damage. And yet it would deal so well. So even though it has no abilities, it starts... Just speak for themselves. They are really well balanced stats. A lot of initiative, a lot of attack, a lot of defense, a lot of critical, a lot of life. And nice speed. What else can you hope for? Nothing is the answer. And now we're really tempted to actually attack again, in fact. From more favorable position, maybe? If I attack from this angle, then I'll be too able to set up uh, here, that would be bad. Do I dare attack again? Can I kill four zealots with two... I mean, four Camelites with two zealots? Yeah, let's try it. Why not? You live and you die, right? <laughs> I think that's not what the zealots would like me to say. I, oh, you know what I could have done? I could have teleported a hero to this army. Then I would have certainly won. No doubt about that. But I didn't think about it, unfortunately. And I might have to pay the price. It would not be a very high price to pay, however. So it's all good. All right, I even will set up like so. You know the deal by now, and move one tile backwards, and the enemy, there's no way the enemy can actually make it towards me. 
in time. So that's good. And I'll actually start dealing some damage already. So as you can see, yeah. I guess only three or four Hammonites, Zealots can deal with them very well because their range is nice and their damage is sick. Especially compared especially paired up with area of effect damage. So even as tanky units as Hammonites that are supposed to be good against area of effect, nah, they're not good enough just because of how slow they are. Of course it did disallow me to actually strike this then, but it's still relatively good. This is a longer battle, it's the battle of the Hammonites. The last match of the Hammonites. I keep thinking of well, Lord of the Rings for some reason. Actually, no, it's not for some reason. It's because I'm rereading this again. This book, I mean, Lord of the Rings, which I haven't done in ages. I actually don't remember when was the last time I read the Lord of the Rings, but it was literally ages. It was many, 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 many years. Which is good. I don't like having to reread my books too often, which sometimes I do have to do because. You can only have so many books and you can only read so slow and I usually read fast unfortunately so I get through those books relatively quickly even when I'm trying to read slowly. And you know, I am a writer, I love books, I love writing box books but I also love reading books. So <laughs> it's not as difficult, you know, those books do cost money as it turns out. <laughs> so you could say I write books to be able to read books. <laughs> Uh, if only I was able to add a lot of value for writing, maybe one day, this would be this would be awesome. Anyway, fulfilled my faction quit. That was the wrong quest. Huh? That, I thought this is the village I was supposed to destroy. I may have bugged this out. Located to the Silex village in a region called Danin. Yeah, that is the only village in this region unless there's one more village over there. So there has to be a different village over there. So I didn't need to ban those guys. That's a shame. Poor guys. <laughs> Sorry for killing you all. But I guess it happened. So what, yeah, what can you do, right? Um, awkward. Alright then. Now this city, what they want to do is... I do want to continue working on borrow streets as quickly as possible. Borrow streets are useful. They really, really are. So let's go ahead and continue doing just that. What did just happen? My city got re-erected. Alright, that's fine. Not a big problem with that. Continue scouting here, although it might be a dead end. Yep, I just met the Florida of this continent, so there's nothing else to see right there, which is unfortunate because there could have been a lot of land over here, but I guess this is not going to be the case. Let's let's finish exploring my own territory because there might be something useful over here, or maybe a land connection to something else. Doesn't look like it. I think it's going to be a shore right here. But you know, it's good to have this kind of intel. Meanwhile, I'll continue walking along in this direction and try to see if there's a different village or if I bug the quest, which is by all means possible. Alright, then. Now, you continue walking borrow suits. Can I move some of you on food production? No, I need to walk full time. That's good enough, I guess. As for you, uh, I only need five extra influence. Alright, so let's make sure I gain exactly five, like so. Right, that's good. Add focus work and plow factory as well. Yeah, seems fair. Seems decent enough of one idea. Let's do just that. Now, do I still have my pillars of knowledge? No, they, they just disappeared. I think they disappeared this time, so it's fine. Add. You yeah, what? Alright, now I sadly have to kill them. They are being too ballsy. I was going to settle here because I will need to settle here because of my faction F request. Alright, you know? Uh, yeah, I will stick with this. Thank you very much. That's why I gained this uh, influence to begin with. <sighs> Should I say F you to those battle suits and just make an army? I will. I will. Indeed, that's exactly what I will do. Now, thankfully, Anchor Wings are quite good against Marines. Marines can get a uh, Flying Slayer, which is kind of bad. But Anchor Wings still can just annihilate those Marines very easily as soon as they get to them, so it's fine. What is not fine is that winter is coming and any sort of attack will be difficult, especially since I have less food and dust production, which I need to A, develop my cities, B, to place down pillars. So, so that is a sort of a problem. Right, but still, I can place this pillar of knowledge and I should do that, so I'll do it. And now I get more science, which is good. Not by a lot, but still more science is always useful, isn't it? Now, I'm tempted to actually put my hero into the city. Let's have a quick look. I mean, she is not doing anything right now. I might as well put her in a city. But she wouldn't benefit in any way. She does have extra 5 size on a city, but that's not a big deal. It is extra 5 size and I'm not using her right now. 
So I'll just do it. I'll sign a hero. Extra five signs. Why not? She will also get some experience from this. When I finish creating Exactors. So that's good. And of course winter just started. Could have just said earlier when voters were about to expand. So you delay them. And maybe allow me to see them when they were coming. <laughs> Actually. If I had the influence to declare war on them. I could destroy the city right away. Because it's a newly created city. And those zealots will just destroy the militia so easily. But I do not have the influence, so let's not talk about things that are not going to happen. Because they're not going to happen, as simple as that. Molly along, molly along, but I guess I'll have to deal with that. Alright, so what's that? That's... They want peace, and they will give me Alchemist Furnace for peace. Hum, that is tempting, and the reason for that is very simple. I don't have the influence to declare war on them just yet. And they will give me Alchemist Furnace for free, which will allow me to get Titanium and the Glass Sea, which will allow me to equip my units with better equipment once I finish one of my faction quests. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll just betray them later. <laughs> it's fine. I'm such a mean person, I know, but that's okay. So right now we officially cannot attack each other because we are actually at peace. I can still walk through their land unless they disallow me to do, do so by declaring closed borders, but it costs 150 influence to do that. That's a lot of influence, I don't think they are willing to spend that. Alright, main city, continue walking on anchor wings as much as possible. Secondary city, I will need you to... Finish plow factory maybe? To grow faster? I don't care about you too much. In all honesty, what I do care about... Hey, hold on a second. I already besieged me. They are. Whatever, in two turns I'll kill them very, very easily. So anyway, secondary city. I do actually want it to grow faster, just so I can give me more dust and whatnot, which would be useful. I don't think I'll buy this thing out, though. Now, the problem is, if I do buy it out, it will use a lot of my dust, and I'll have negative dust gain, because this structure dust costs dust to maintain, to per 10, so I'll be in a pretty dicey situation by the end of this winter, which will not be a very long winter as it turns out, but still, I'm not sure if I'm comfortable, or oh, whatever. <laughs> let's do it anyway. And then let's start working on the mines. Now what do I want more? I want initiative, quite badly, as the other mages, because if you give your zealots any anchor wings more initiative, actually no, anchor wings require more armor that you can gain from titanium, zealots require more initiative that you can gain from glass steel, and because I want to make sure I have the best initiative possible, I will go for glass steel first, and I'll start making as much glass steel as possible. Then, and only then, I'll start actually going for titanium, which I am yet to discover. Alright, so titanium has to be somewhere in this undiscovered patch of land, so that's good to know. So here this is. Go ahead and see if you can find a tenure. They did, that's good. Now they might die to those guys, but hopefully no. Either way, oh wow, this video cast is actually fairly long already. So I'll just end it right here, I guess. Thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. You have been watching a video made by Pancho, so also known as the Mighty Mix Power. Thank you very much for watching. If you somehow managed to enjoy my video, then please do support me in any way you see. F there we go. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you online.